In this video, I will go over the 13 stocks that I talked about the week of February 5th through the 9th and show you whether the gaps close to the upside or to the downside. I will go over price action in a separate video. First up is NEO. We ended the week at 593. Now the gap that I was tracking would take us up to $6.14. We have not made it. We kissed it right there, but it is still in play for the following week. This gap, did touch to the upside right here. So this gap is no longer in play. Meantime, during this week, this gap opened up, it went down and that means the gap will fill to the upside. So it opened up to the upside basically and that would take us out right here. at roughly 554. If I move this line out of the way, you may be able to see it better. See that gap that opened up first thing Monday? So we gap down. So when things gap down, I anticipate a gap up when we correct, and it did. And then meantime, this gapped up big time, and now I will anticipate a gap to close to the downside eventually. It might not be next week, it could be weeks from now. You just have to keep your eyes on that and see which direction price goes. And there is another gap to the upside with NEO right up here that will take us to eventually $7.16. We are not in that channel, not in the zone, something to be aware of. We are still going down on the five minute time frame on the channel here. You can see that the channel is going downward. Next one is SoFi. We ended the week at $8.13. Let's talk about this gap to the upside. Didn't quite touch there, got very close, but this Gap will still be in play for the following week. This mini gap, we gapped up, so we will close to the downside and it touched right about there to the downside. I will turn this red so that way I know visually at a quick glance what happened. This gap opened up on Monday morning, we gapped down a nice little buy-in opportunity, which I did do. I have SoFi at different price ranges that I bought in at for myself and for my mother. So this gap to the upside closed at roughly 787 on Tuesday. I bought in here and here and previously here. I have traded this a couple times so I'll have to show you this in a bigger time frame which I will do later not now but I do still have shares in the six something range as well and do we have other gaps to the upside after this one that I was tracking yep so in a previous week from the week of the 22nd through the 26th there I was still tracking this gap to the upside we are not in the channel not in the zone something to be aware of and what else do I have these are my buy-ins at different times all right that does it for SoFi a nice channel upward They had a good earnings report, which I talked about previously. And then we we're off to the races. But anytime you go up, I anticipate going down and then going sideways for a potential leg up. But you cannot expect the stock to continue to run. Otherwise, you will get run over. Tesla is the next one. If you can't afford or don't want to play Tesla, check out Tesla.
This is the Option Income Strategy ETF. I have been tracking this gap to the upside that takes us to 974. Actually, there are many gaps that I've been tracking, but we're not there yet, so I'm not even gonna bother to point it out just yet. You can check out my old videos if you wanna see what those are, or just flip it over to the daily, the weekly, the monthly. Check it out for yourself. So that's still in play, and we're getting close to this bottom touch point at 913. So we could eventually touch that maybe Monday, Tuesday, if we continue to go up. But will we close this out on Monday? Absolutely not. There's no way. Could we wick all the way up? Yes, but I don't think we would wick all the way up to this level at 974. So this little gap got closed out there, but this one we gap down. I anticipate a gap up. We're very close, so that should close out if we continue to go up on Monday. Wait, is, no, that's not President's Day. Yeah, we are open, so for business, the market is. That will take us to 8.92. It started at 8.68 right here, and we touched we touched it, but didn't quite close it. Very close. All day long, I anticipate price to stay within negative two and two standard deviations, and those lines will constantly change as well. PCG, Pacific Gas and Electric. The gap that I was tracking takes us to 17.07. We are a long ways off, not even close, not in the channel. Meantime, this gap developed on Monday, and we're still not in that channel, but getting close, er, but right now we are still in a downward trajectory. So I don't know if we will continue to go down or if we'll bounce slightly up and then close that out with a wick or something like that before maybe going back down again. But Right now, the middle of the trend is where we are. You can always expect price to fall through here on the way down or go through it on the way back up. But this gap is in play at 1654, closing out at 1664. Rivian. This gap is still in play here but we are getting closer. I anticipate this will touch sometime this week, probably on Monday. Volume is higher than normal. Average volume is 31 million. We're at 41, so I think people are still in this. And is there another gap to the upside? Yep, I'm tracking other gaps, but right now this is the one I am focused on because that's what I brought up for this week. And no other gaps that I'm tracking to the upside, but there is this little gap to the downside, which is also within range. So that will take us right to 212 two standard deviations at 1612. So watch out for that landmine to the south side. Pfizer, this one's kind of been a hot mess. I meant to buy in and dollar cost average some more and I didn't get to do that. I got a little scared because I looked on the monthly time frame and it's still going down. Actually, I looked at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, still going down, but we popped back up. So I will look for another, another opportunity to buy in because I do have some more shares that are expensive and then some cheaper ones down below. So I want to dabble and get some more. So this gap that I have been tracking closed out on Monday. So this is no longer a threat to the downside. That's nice. And then we're down at support. We ran up to resistance, fell down, and I don't see any other 
micro gaps, gaps for the week. So back to this gap, not this one, but it's this one. This one opened up. Oh wait, we touched, sorry. That's why I put it right here. I thought it was still in play, it's not. This is the gap that I am still tracking that will close out at 30, 35. We are not in the channel, not in the zone, something to be aware of. And to the downside, I think that's it. So hopefully we are off and running with this stock with a few, you know, downturns, but then mostly up. Pfizer will not let itself fail. It's too big to fail. The next one is Exelon. This gap opened up on Monday and didn't touch it there. So this is still in play. That will take us to 3434. And this was the gap that I was tracking previously at 34.97, so that's still in play to the upside. We have many gaps to the upside. When this thing turns around, it's going to be profitable. But it's gonna take a while because look at this on the five minute. We are still going down. So in general, we're still making lower lows downward. Altria Group, this gap to the downside, Closed out right there, so it's no longer a threat to our account to the south side. This closed out. This big whopper to the upside will take us to 42.40. So obviously I've been tracking this for quite some time to the north side. Look at this massive move to the downside on the five minute. It's just going down, down, down. But look, we're going sideways here, so that's good. But right now, on the five minute, we are at resistance. So I, f I feel like we're gonna go down a little bit, grind here, and then bounce back up. The next one, Schlumberger. The gap that I'm tracking will take us all the way to $53.03, but we are still in a downward movement there. This gap closed to the downside, this gap closed to the downside, another gap to the upside at 56.39. All right, oh, look at this. This might be an opportunity because we're at 47.08 last time I looked at it, 52.92, and then before that, 49.95. I love it when there's blood in the water. I know it's painful as we continue to go down, but if you do the fundamental analysis combined with the technicals, hopefully you'll see that there is some upside potential. And according to the analysts, the one-year price target is $68. Of course, there's a lot of room to the upside and downside. And right here, 57 is a target, 68, and then 81. But that's a long ways off. Baba is the next one. This one made a lot of movements here for us. Just a second, something happened to. There we go. I hit something, so let me, what the heck? Okay, let me try that again. All right, earnings came out, look at that. So they reported 36 billion 36.67 billion, and then the estimate was 36.658 billion, and they did not meet the estimate. And then look at this. 
that's what happens. Like sometimes they get beaten up even though they made more money, but not as much as Wall Street expected. So that's very frustrating. But let me show you what happened. So out of the gate, we gapped up. So this looks messy here. I had extended this out just when I did the video, but basically this one ended. So that closed out at 72.37. Right, the last time I talked about it, it was at 71.85. I'll talk about this downward gap in a second, but this gap that I had previously talked about the previous week I just pull it out when I talk about these, just thinking that I will have to extend it. But basically, right out of the gate on Monday, it closed out, so yay, to the upside. So that closed out at 73.51, opened up at 72.73. So that's done. What else happened? So then, oh my goodness, this thing ran up like crazy, right? So then there was this gap that I have been tracking that takes us to 76.55. I had extended previously. So that touched right there. So this gap is no longer in play to the upside. It's touched at 75.54. All right, note this gap, we gapped up. So what happens when you go up? It must come down. Doesn't mean it's gonna close the same day, but eventually, if you give it enough time, it most likely will touch. Could take years. All right, so we we gapped up, so on the way down, that closed out right there at 74.70, so yay, no longer a threat. That opened up on Tuesday, closed out on Wednesday. Meantime, this gap here from the previous week, look, it didn't touch. It looks like it did, but it didn't. So there's some more upside potential there. Oops, that is not grabbing. Huh, it's very weird. There we go, 78, 74, and then this one at 7811. So we've got those two gaps. This one gapped down, so we will gap up on the way back up. That will take us to 7360. Yeah, this could this could touch on Monday and close out. We're very close. And then this gap that I've been talking about for quite some time at 68.64 is still in play. So don't think the good times will just continue without some down downward price action. So that will take us down to 68.64. And what else? All of my previous buy-ins, sales, support resistance lines. I've been tracking this one for quite some time. And the next one is the next one is Nike. We closed out a gap to the upside, I think. Oh nope. From a distance, it looked like we did, but we didn't. So close. Look at that. Nope. So this gap. If we continue to go up, we'll close out on Monday at 105.03. All right, and then this gap that I have been tracking previously because we tanked in the stock, 106.47, okay? And what else to the downside here? Oh, we did touch to the downside this is right here on Tuesday. So that is done, no longer in play. And that is all I am tracking. 
So we've got some upside gaps to fill, so that's nice, and the channel is going up. All right, the next one. This gap, where are we? Oh, I, did I accidentally erase my, yep. Let me mark out Friday right there. All right, so from this week, I extended some gaps. So this gap is still in play for the upcoming week. And this baby gap also, we're not in that channel. I have to make it bigger or it won't do what I want. All right. And what else? What, why do I have this? What happened here? Let me move, oh, so there was a gap right here. We gapped down, so that means we have a gap to look forward to, to the upside. So that closed right there at 209.38 on its way when it was on its way up, it touched. And we have this gap that is still a threat to us, to the downside, as well as this one. So that one will take us out to 196.98. And then we have a few other gaps that I'm tracking to the downside as well. And finally, lows. I would like to stop talking Stop talking about lows. I've tracked this one for quite some time now. It wanted to close this gap. It touched it and kissed it right there, but we're still not there. But I do anticipate we will close it this coming week because we are still in an upward channel and that will take us to 225.33, fingers crossed. This gap developed to the downside, so this is now a threat to us, but I will not continue to track this to the downside. If this closes, I'm done with tracking. These are just little things that open up, but, the, but they're not the major things I was tracking to begin with for my gap and go trades. This is a gap recap for the week of the 5th through the 9th. And that's it there, fingers crossed again. So that is a look at Neo, SoFi, Tesla, PCG, Rivian, Pfizer, Exelon, Altria, Schlumberger, Baba, Nike, Boeing, and Lowe's. And I will make a video very shortly of the next Gap and Go trades. Again, this is a Gap recap for the week of February 5th through the 9th. Hopefully you made some money. I'll talk to you later.